Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's new energy minister used her recent budget vote to flag a major shake-up at the Central Energy Fund, as well as to offer a roadmap for ending the renewables impasse. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights of the speech. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Minister Kubaya signaled that there were some major changes in store for the Central Energy Fund. What is the background to this? Well, the background is major financial distress at certain of the subsidiaries of the uh, Central Energy Fund, notably Pet Petro SA, and major governance concerns at another subsidiary, the Strategic Fuel Fund. Now, Petro SA, uh, we know, has, has been a real, well, as, as the minister termed it, a problem child for some time. We had a situation where to sustain the gas to liquids plant, the old Moss gas plant in Mossel Bay, new gas needed to be discovered and urgently so and a uh, process was initiated of drilling and res a reserve was found and was was drilled to be mined and that hasn't yielded that project equesi just hasn't yielded the gas that was initially thought to be there so the plant is now short gas that has led to massive impairments because it was a major multi-billion rand uh, project so over 10 billion rands of worth of impairments major losses at petro sa Plus, we've seen the oil price tank over that period. So we've seen uh, chronic losses at Petro SA and a lack of visibility about that company's future, especially at Moscas with the lack of gas there. They are in the process of using condensate instead to convert that into uh, liquid, liquid fuels uh, instead of gas, but that's not a very efficient process. And we know that the gas uh, infrastructure programs around bringing in LNG which may have provided something of a source for, um, for Petro SA, for Moss Gas, have also been uh, delayed. Initially, there was a plan to try and bring in a, uh, put in a floating buoy off Mossel Bay. The, the, the con sea conditions there were not, uh, were not appropriate for that. So we know that th there's now been a selection of, other, of both Richards Bay and Cooker instead, and then possibly a pipeline to, to supplement the gas, but that's, that, there's no real visibility around the security of supply for gas. So Petro SA is a big problem, a big loss maker. Um, and uh, we also know that there's been a, a Central Energy Fund board has written to the existing board members to say that they, he, he thinks they should all resign um, and they're not happy. Um, and then there's the, cent the Strategic Fuel Fund, the SFF, which uh, illegally sold South Africa's strategic fuel stocks um, it was initially dubbed a rotation of stocks, but this is a major governance breakdown, probably criminal. And uh, we have had an initial report that's been given to the new minister uh, who says that, uh, that the PFMA has been flouted, governance rules have been flouted, and uh, there, there potentially could be criminal charges flowing. It's still early days, but I think there's going to be some sort of uh, a process there to, to look at who uh, um, approved this. It didn't seem to go through the, the correct governance process. So what the ministers flagged, uh, and this has been around for some time, within this context there are some sub sub subsidiaries of S uh, C uh, CEF that are uh, stable, but all of them, uh, the whole sort of uh, system is under stress and there's a, f a flagging of a total restructuring of the, the central energy fund uh, companies, a consolidating and merger of the governance into one board so she, the minister Kubai, sort of likened it to a Transnet type uh, arrangement where Transnet has operations across freight rail, uh, across uh, engineering, across ports and across pipelines. And uh, potentially we could have a consolidation of one board central energy fund that has these subsidiaries like Petro SA, SFF, instead of individual boards that fall under the central energy fund. But that we'll have to wait to see the, the details of that. We haven't seen the details, but that has what is one of the things that has been flagged. Um, and there's a view that maybe that will tighten up the governance. But there's, there's serious problems within that uh, Central Energy Fund group of companies. And it's a drain. And at some point, it come, might come back to bite the taxpayer in the form of a bailout, unless it's snipped in the bud. Part of this restructuring involves merging the IPP office into the CEF. Yes, that was one of the eyebrow-raising elements of the restructuring. You know, we, we know that the IPP office has been very, really uh, held in high regard by investors. It has facilitated nearly 200 billion rands worth of uh, renewables investment into the country. It's in the process of running programs around coal-based load projects or those 
although those projects are, are, uh, are massively delayed due to legal issues around, um, around those projects and whether they have uh, climate change assessments in place. Um, and we've, uh, we're also going to be moving on the gas, the gas side, which is, as I said earlier, is crucial not only for the gas to power program, but to p potentially for the future of something like Petro SA to get that sorted out. Um, so it's, a, it's seen as a, a well-run, well-managed office. It's a, a really a joint venture between the National Treasury and the Department of Energy. It's been running very much independently uh, as a ring-fenced unit. I think it sort of washes its own face financially in terms of fees that it gets from the RPP applicants for the processing of those uh, th those bid windows. So it's it's really held in in high regard, and many countries are actually sort of replicating that model. There has been this issue of whether the uh, RPP office was vulnerable in that it wasn't really institutionalized. So that debate has been raised. But some have been concerned that if you institutionalize it, it's going to be contaminated uh, by all the lack of, of all the poor governance that we see in many departments and state-owned companies. So now what this merger into the Central Energy Fund could be an issue of raising the game for the whole Central Energy Fund, where you take this pristine office this very well managed and you almost uh, reverse engineer that sort of governance across the Central Energy Fund group, that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is that the RPP office itself gets contaminated by the poor governance um, that we've seen in the Central Energy Fund group of companies. So it's one to watch. I think it's too early to condemn. It, it, it is an institutionalization that has been called for by, s by some people, but there is a, a, th a risk of contamination of poor governance. The Minister has also promised to provide some certainty regarding the renewables impasse by early June. That's, uh, that's a major development. You know, we've had this impasse since 2015. It really came to light in the middle of 2016 where Eskom made it clear in the letters to um, the Department of Energy or the Minister of Energy that they weren't, going to, weren't prepared to sign further um, RPP until they had visibility on the cost recovery mechanism. Um, even though the president in his State of the Nation has said that these projects will be signed, even though there's legal opinion that says that this, these are, are legally procured and that the RPPs have every right to have a PPA signed, uh, we have seen no real action. We did have an, a date set by the previous Energy Minister, Tina Jomat Pedersen, for April 11, but that obviously with the cabinet reshuffle, the new minister wanted to have a review before she entered into any uh, commitments there. So what has happened um, is that uh, Lynn Brown from Public Enterprises and uh, Minister Kabai have set up a joint a ministerial task team to look at the impasse, to look at whether Eskom is raising issues that are valid, to look at the v uh, validity of the, the, the um, RPP's claims to PPAs, which the legal opinion, as I stated, seems to say is fairly firm, um, and then to try and find a way out of this impasse and uh, they've, the two ministers have given that task team until the first week in June to report back with uh, some sort of way of resolving this. So we should ho hopefully see some certainty emerging uh, in, in during the course of next month. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.